As with any 3D application, the interface and navigating that interface is one of the most important things to grasp when starting out with Blender. The interface in Blender is comprised of several different elements. Starting from the left to right, on the left side we have the toolbar, and this toolbar contains a multitude of tools that allow you to work directly with your 3D model. We'll start, we'll use some of these whenever in the modeling section when we actually start looking at manipulating our objects. Right here in the center, we have the 3D viewport. The viewport is your view into the 3D world and is where you will spend most of your time working directly with your objects. The viewport allows you to manipulate all the different objects within your scene, including the camera, the mesh, and the lights. Moving over to the top right, we have the outliner. The outliner is a display of all the different objects within your scene. It allows you to see what's connected to what, select those objects, and manipulate them in other ways. Although you won't use this a lot starting out probably, it is very essential when you start working with large scenes and you'll quickly begin to see how valuable it can be. Right below it, you can find the properties panel. The properties panel has a series of different properties along the header here, which all contain different settings relating to your scene. The default one are the render properties that allow you to change things like image size, output formats, and whatnot. We'll explore a few of these here in this Getting Started series here in a little while. For the time being though, it's a good thing to just explore and see what's what. Next, going back over to the bottom, we have the timeline. The timeline here is used during animation and allows you to move your, your view through time. Now by default, you're not going to notice anything changing here, except for this number here, which refers to the frame number. The frame number is your number of frames per second, and we'll cover this more in the intro to animation. For the time being, let's go ahead and move on to navigation. Navigation is one of the most essential things, as it's what allows you to move around your 3D world. Since we're working with a full 3D object that allows us to ma mani manipulate it from every side and angle, it's important to be able to move around naturally. Now, with your mouse over the 3D viewport, you can move around using a combination of hotkeys and the middle mouse button. If you just click your middle mouse button, you're able to rotate your view around or orbit your view around your model. This is good for viewing at any angle. However, it's also important to be able to pan your view or move it from side to side and up and down, which you can do by holding shift and middle click and dragging. You can also zoom your view by using the scroll wheel on your mouse on your mouse or the plus and minus keys on your keypad to zoom in and out. Obviously this is essential for viewing models closer or getting real up close to details or far away to view an entire scene. Next there's even more and that is it's necessary to be able to view your model from direct angles such as the top, the front, the back, the side, etc. And this can be done by the keypad on your keyboard. Now do keep in mind that this is not the same as the top numbers 1 through 0 on your keyboard along the top. They are very different within Blender without changing a few settings. So if you do not have a keypad on your laptop, you can use the function keys and the J, K, and L and those keys to compensate for your number pad or you'll find a setting within the user preferences to emulate the number pad. For the time being, if you can use a number pad, I highly encourage it. And this allows you by to change directly to your individual views. The three most commonly used are top, front, and side. You can switch to top view by hitting 7 on your number pad, front by 1, side view by hitting 3, and then you can go to the opposite of each of those by holding down control and hitting 7, 1 for back, 3 for, for side or the left side, and of course the top was the bottom. You can also toggle between perspective and orthographic mode, orthographic being that there's no perspective applied to the viewport, by hitting 5 on your number pad to toggle between the two. You'll normally use uh, orthographic view while modeling directly from a reference, and then perspective mode to check that you have not overcompensated anything and that everything is correct when viewed with perspective to make sure that everything is as it should be in the real world. Next, you can also use the 4, 6, and 8 on your keypad to rotate at increments around your model, and this can be helpful for getting a more direct, exact view to your model. And lastly, on the number pad, you can use 0 to switch to your camera view. As you can see in the 3D view here, 
we have a camera object that allows us to see what's going on. And this acts just like a real world camera in that it is it captures the view. And so anytime you want to create an image or render an image out into a JPEG, PNG, or another image format, you use the camera to display what you want to view. And so by hitting zero on the number pad, you can see that, and that will allow you to save out that image. Now, we will cover that more directly in one of the later sections in rendering. But for the time being, go ahead and practice navigating around your model until you can navigate very, very naturally to any angle you want to zoom in and out, pan around, orbit, you name it.